Okay, hi everyone, it's Paul DeCane for DV Magazine, it's Production Tip Friday um, and we're going to take a quick simple tutorial video today to look at two uh, stacking up two effects within Logic, the um, DAW that I use most frequently, uh, to create a filter delay. Uh, it's very simple but very effective, especially used in moderation. Uh, so let's have a look at how we achieve this. First of all, a um, quick look at the track that's on the uh, desk at the moment on the range page and this is how it sounds. In particular I'd like to uh, draw your attention to this arpeggiator sequence here. And as you can hear there's a small amount of reverb which we're sending uh, across that track which just is giving a bit of ambience to it but the focus point of today's tutorial is the filter delay now this track sits on an audio channel an audio track and over here on the left hand side of the screen you can see that bus 2 is sending to uh, the reverb we mentioned on auxiliary 2 here but bus 1 is the important one you can see that the volume uh, control for that. The gain is set to zero because there's nothing sending to the stacked effects that we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to use Logic's automation to uh, put some sends to this stack of uh, effects. Well, let's have a look at the stack itself. What are we trying to achieve here? Well, first of all, the signal goes via bus one uh, and it's going to hit a tape delay, first of all, it's switched off at the moment, uh, and then the actual delay sound, the sequence, the feedback and however the plugin is set up will be sent to the auto filter. So the auto filter is not just applying to one particular sound as a hit, as a, an instance, the auto filter is actually filtering the sequence of delays uh, and if you look at here we've got a 44% feedback on that particular tape delay. So it gives a Oh, it's going to give a really, really nice effect. It's a very simple thing to do, but used in moderation, this can be quite a killer, almost signature sound um, to your to your productions. Okay, so let's flick automation on, uh, which we do by going to the top of the page here and doing that. Uh, you can see I've already prepared and drawn in some automation, sending contents of the audio track to that stack of plugins, the tape delay and the auto field. So let's switch them back on. First of all the tape delay and secondly the auto filter. They're engaged now and as you can see from the automation here that this fourth sequence uh, within the arpeggiator se set of sequences is the one that's going to have that effect applied. You can hear how that sounds now. <laughs> So there you go, quite a nice sound. Okay, let's just take a closer look at how we achieve that. You'll see from this automation shape here that we have applied a certain amount of gain to the beginning of this sound and it increases to the peak at minus 5.3 dB. Uh, so that actually accentuates the last part of that sequence. And it's easy enough to copy that if you think that that particular feed to the uh, stack of effects, the tape delay and the auto filter applied to it is correct and it's quite simple to just highlight that particular selection and copy it across to the fourth one there and again the fourth one there. So you get something like this. <laughs> Also if you'd like to give the feedback of the delay an increased amount that will feed into the filter and kind of overlap itself. If we push it beyond 50% it should more or less continue ad infinitum really. Let's see how that sounds. OK, 
Okay, let's just take that down a wee bit, back to about 44, 43. And there we have it. That's it, really. Simple, but very effective. This particular effect works great over vocals, um, a cappellas that you may have in your productions, synth lines, even percussion. Uh, I think the secret really is to just apply it uh, because it's such an overlapping effect that's very prominent within the mix uh, and al also needs to be a, a periodic feature, not a dominant ubiquitous one, that it's best to use it this way. The tape delay sits on top of the auto filter as you can see here. And I'm just going to zoom the screen on the tape delay and the auto filter to give you an idea of how my preset templates are and from there you can adapt them to whatever production you're working on i.e. the feedback which we've just seen in operation you can change the actual section of the frequency that is affected by the tape delay the different timings with different notes, crotchets, quavers, semi-quavers etc uh, change the groove, the percentage of the groove of course and various other things like LFO rate and depth in fact let's just put them together here and you can see that the template names I've given them, the pre-filter and the post-filter, give you an indication of how they sit on the actual effects channel tape delay on top of auto filter. So the delay feeds the auto filter uh, the information via the audio track. Right, I'll leave these on the screen for a while so you can see the default settings. My recommendation is to use these as your default and uh, apply them to whatever production you're working on. The important thing to remember, of course, is that however your track tempo changes, for example, if uh, I'm at 127 at the moment, if I was to change that to 135 or go lower to, say, 118, the effects would move with it. So that's cool. Okay, as I said, short and sweet. It's a very simple thing to do, but very effective. Use it in moderation and have some fun with it. Thanks for checking in. We'll see you next time.